Hi, my name is Dan Vito and I'm at Fireborn Studios. I'm talking today to my students about some ways that they can add value to their pots by painting or carving or altering the shape uh, or a combination of the above. And so I'm going to show you some examples of what I see up here that my students have done. Uh, and then we're going to go downstairs to the gallery and look at some examples of things that I've done. And hopefully this will give you some ideas of various techniques that you can use and the way you can combine those techniques to add interest and value to your work. I know the glazes we have are awesome and they can really make a very plain pot and look spectacular, but there are a lot of other things that you could do to add value and interest to your pots. When you are decorating your pots, you need to develop a vocabulary and that vocabulary will eventually be unique to you. Okay, so there are a lot of pots that are very clean like this one and this one and they're nice and round which is what you get when you make pots on a wheel uh, but occasionally we have something like this one here which is squared off on the lip and that adds some interest to the pot or we have something like this where people have a foot with some notches out of it and some holes so this is like a berry bowl and I suspect that that is an accident, uh, but I don't know. And here is a piece that somebody has squished into an oval. And uh, here is a very, very nice piece that somebody has done some very interesting carving on. And over here, this is probably some texture that came from lace. And over here on the bottom of this pot, which belongs to JS, there's some uh, carving indentations. Here there's some lines going around the pot. Here there's some dimples and holes. Back over here, there's some vertical carving on this kind of cord shaped piece. Over here, there's some stuff going on in the center of this plate. And likewise over here, some stuff going on. This one is undulated, which provides some interest. That one in the back is just simply elegant. And uh, it kind of stands alone. But getting back to this pot, you know, it's a, it's a great pot. It's well made, it's nice and light, but um, you can do stuff to pots to make them more interesting. Let's take a look over here. So here we have a, a berry bowl. Oh, lots of holes in it. And here on this rack is this piece with carbon going in different directions. And down here, a little piece with some things happening on it. And here is a very nice mug. And what's particularly nice about this mug is the carving that this person did is in kind of a radial pattern. And we're looking at the center of one of those patterns. And then this pattern is sort of emanating from up here. And over here, it's emanating from down below. Uh, so, thoughtful, creative ways to add value to your pots. And here's a piece with an altered lip, which is quite nice. And, here all the camera. That was done by going like this. Okay. So this has to be done while it's either on the wheel or shortly after it comes off the wheel. And you just go around and go like that. And if it's if it won't hold the shape, then you have to come back when it's a little stiffer and touch it up. And here's another piece 
with an altered lip. Same kind of procedure like this. And goopy slip in the middle to make a nice pattern. So those are some examples up here uh, looking at bisque wear and leather hard stuff before it gets glazed. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go downstairs with you and show you some finished pieces that I pulled off the shelves in the gallery. So let's go downstairs. Now, obviously, you wanna start with a nice form and glaze in itself will definitely add value. You can, we've got wonderful glazes. You can really make your pots look good with just glaze. But there are many other things that you can do to your pots to go beyond just simply glazing them. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about right now. So here is a collection of pots that have had things done to them to add value. And I'm going to go over each one of these with you and explain what we did and how we did it. This first group of pots here I'm gonna show you has been squished. And I call these flounders. So you can see this was squished this way. This was done when it was wet on the wheel. Uh, this is similar. And one of the things that happens when you squish these is you get a broad surface here that you can do some kind of decoration on. And, uh, you know, basically it's a two-sided pot as opposed to a pot that doesn't have sides. And here's another one. And on this one, I did uh, a kind of a subtle decoration over here. And this one is squished into three sides. So one, two, three. And this one was thrown uh, and cut off with no bottom. It was squished and put on a slab. And then um, this upper section was added and a thrown neck and some handles for interest. And kind of related to that is this piece here, which was thrown and round and uh, simply pushed out like that to make it oval. Okay, so that's it for this set. The next set, you'll see. So this next little group of pots uh, is about lip treatment. And um, this one here, the lip was simply folded out and kind of like you'd make a pie crust, you just go like this and push down. And so that adds a little bit of interest to this lip and try the other angle mm -hmm. too. So they can kind of see that. Okay. And one of the consequences of this was the glaze did some nice stuff. Um, not everywhere, but in some spots. Okay, this is a very similar technique. It had a kind of a thick lip. And again, I pushed down like that. And you're getting some nice glaze action. Now, this pot had a split lip. So when I threw it, I left this lip pretty thick and I used the butt end of the needle tool to come down in here and split this and make a V groove all the way around. And then I altered it by pushing like this um, in three places. And then to accentuate this change, I put a little doodad down there. And then to make this lip more interesting where I split it, I put oil spot in the V groove. And if you get a real close look, you can see the spotting effect uh, in there. And this is another variation of the split lip. And on this one, it's just like a pie crust. You go around the pot and you go like this. Two, three, four, five, six, around the pot. And when you do this, if it has a split lip, the 
splits kind of get squished like right there. And that becomes interesting. And I put a real runny glaze, I put oil spot here to highlight that big groove. Okay, now, uh, here's another variation. This is a piece of Don Hedman's. So this lip on this pie plate had three lines in it, kind of V grooves, but more just like lines. And then he went around and went like that, all the way around, just like you crimp a pie crust. And that's a pie plate, so that's good. And, and now we're going to take a look at lips that aren't V-groove lips, but lips that are altered. So on this one, I used a, a, a child's toy block because I wanted a 90 degree angle. If you use a rib, it's too sharp and you cut. So I wanted that 90 degree angle to come in there and make a more blunt indentation. And I pushed it in like so. And I did this in, in quarter, uh, I did this and this first, and then this and this. So those are the four opposites. And then in between all those, I pushed the other way. So we wound up with eight uh, things going on, four that go out and four that go in. And when you're doing this, uh, there are marks on the bat and you can get your first two lined up with the marks on the bat, and then you do the next two in the middle, and then you do the last four in between the first four. And that'll make it come out even. Now, this is, once again, combining of a couple of different techniques. So I've gone around and, you know, done the pie crust thing all the way around there. And to highlight this indentation here, I've just put a little smush of clay. And the way I make these is I just roll up a little ball of clay, put a little slip on it, stick it on the pot, and I just go like this in one swipe. And it makes that nice trailing edge, which you can also see here. This was just a little ball of clay that I swiped out and it left that nice line. Okay, I call this shape of bowl a trumpet bowl because it's like the bell of a trumpet and uh, and on this one to add value I made a pronounced spiral on the inside with my finger and I wanted it to be pronounced enough that the glaze would break on it and by break I mean it would get thin on the ridges and pool in the valleys and be real visible uh, the glaze also broke on the lip here. And uh, again, this is that same pie crust technique. So obviously I use that a good bit. Um, and this is oil spot, which accentuates with its runniness, uh, the upper section of a pot. Now we're gonna look at another lip treatment. Um, and the way I got this was while it was on the wheel, I held the wire like this, nice and short. And uh, while it was spinning, I just went ch -ch 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 -ch. And I like to vary it so that some places it's, it's, it's not very curved. In other places, I've got some tighter ripples. And you can see that even more clearly, I think, on this one, where in this section, I have sharper little ripples that are closer together, then wider, wavier things, and then a couple of little ripples, and then open waves. Okay, so this is altered in a number of ways. Uh, this was you know, just a flared out piece, um, but what I did was I used the wire to um, you know, cut the lip and make it irregular. And then I kind of squashed it, but I didn't make it oval 
I made it irregular. So here it goes in, there it goes out. You know, there's a lot of distortion there, but it adds interest. This is an example of another lip treatment. In this, I used a square child's block and I pushed in, pushed in, and then I went like this to make this come out more. Um, and when, when I do this, it's sometimes hard to get these two things opposite one another. So what I do is I do this one and this one, which are opposite. And then I do this one and this one, which are opposite. I don't do these two and these two. It's opposite and opposite. And you make sure when you lay a ruler across the pot, the pot and you sight that the ruler is over the center of the pot. And at the beginning of the at the beginning of this video, I showed you some things that were squashed into um, uh, flounders and uh, three sided pieces, and this is the four sided piece. And I I got to this by sticking my hand down inside and just sliding up with my finger on the four corners. And again, you can use the marks on the bat to help you. And if you don't do that, then you want to do opposites and then divide it in half to get this. And after I pushed that out, I went back across this and uh, pushed in and pushed out and whatever. And whatever I needed to do to get this somewhat squared off. And the de decorations on this are wax. And I think I, I sprayed some glaze on top of this. This is... Uh, orange chino, not the carbon trap with wax and probably plum sprayed on or some such thing. Okay, so remember, this is about adding value to your pot. So here's a piece um, where I faceted it. I call this faceting when I have flat sides and I facet by using a wire. So I start at the bottom and I shorten the wire and I slide up. And then I turn the piece and I slide up. I push in at the bottom and I slide up. And I do this when the pot is still attached to the wheel because I don't want it to tip after it's been cut off. I want it to be nice and solid. I very often do this right when it's on the wheel, uh, immediately when I threw it. But sometimes I wait a while. And then where you see this texture here, I used a wire that was um, rippled and it, it made lines in the clay. And then on this flat side, I did a little squiggly decoration. And then I just have this vertical lines that were in the clay. I'm gonna show you a couple more examples of faceting. Um, so this piece here, uh, I used a wiggly wire, and here, I think I used two different wires too. Uh, one with smaller wiggles and another one with bigger wiggles. Anyway, over here, I started at the bottom and I pulled up, and when I got to here, I pulled out. So this has vertical marks. And then over here, where there's a zigzag pattern, I went sawing back and forth as I went up and that made this zigzag. And then I alternated zigzag straight, zigzag straight, zigzag straight. And uh, sometimes I use three different kinds of cuts. Uh, now this is a piece that I think I made on the same day as I made the one I just showed you. This one has vertical or slightly slanted. And then I use this kind of wire over here for a smooth cut. And then I use my wiggly wire, smooth, wiggly, and so on. And when I make these things, uh, after I've done those cuts, I take a digger tool and I dig underneath to get that bevel there. And then I trim it. Uh, and you can see I have a bevel on the bottom of this one too. Uh, and it was trimmed. And also, after I've, uh, after I've done my wire cuts on these, while they're still on the bat, I, uh, I spin them on the wheel and I work on the lip. 
And so that gives me an opportunity to make the lip nice and I put a V-groove cut in this. And when I talk about V-groove cuts, this is the scale I'm talking about. A big enough groove that you can run a bead of oil spot in it and thick enough that it's not going to chip um, when we load it into the bisque kiln and when we're just handling it in a normal way. And finally, here's a third piece that's faceted, and this was all with a straight wire. So I went in, up, and pulled out, and that gives me a kind of a sharp edge here. Okay. Now, uh, this next technique I call fluting. So this is a simple bulbous shape, kind of like a teapot base, uh, and this one still has soaring lines in it, which don't look good with the fluting, they distract from it. But just to show you how I get started, I simply took my finger and made a slight indentation. But if this was for real, um, I would have removed all the throwing lines first. I would have first put in my little finger marks. And then after it sat for a while, I would go back over it and I would make these deeper. And I, then I would reach inside and I would push this side out. And so here's a more finished example. So my indentations are deeper, the bulges bulge out further and it's not just straight up and down like on this guy um, they're slightly sloped which works for me because i have a natural tendency to move my finger in this direction so i go around and i make all these and then you know i just keep working it until i get enough drama i um I like to do this on bulbous shapes. Uh, so I dimpled here. And the way I did that was I simply put my finger inside and I pinched here. I just push out and pinch. And I made one on either side. And then down here, I use a sharp tool and I put a spiral that goes up the pot like so. And then, um, after it was trimmed, I took my finger or something and just pushed up like that so that the lip wasn't perfectly uh, flat. And I like, when I do this kind of thing on the bottom, I very often like to have that correspond to some waviness on top. So if you look at the top, you'll see there's some subtle waviness going on up here where I push down on certain areas uh, so it wouldn't be dead level and he, uh, here's another piece where I've done a similar thing I've I've pushed up on the bottom I put a spiral in that section I pushed out in the middle to dramatize the throwing lines and I've pushed down on several areas of the lip Okay, so add some value to your pots and entertain yourself while you're making them. And uh, I see lots of pots that look like this. I see lots of pots that look like this. It's perfectly fine. It's round, it's symmetrical, it's got a nice glaze. I actually made this one. Um, but to me, it's kind of boring. These are my final two examples of adding value to your pot. So this one has a number of things going on. First of all, uh, there was some carving done. And, you know, I didn't do the carving. I can't do that. But I had somebody who can draw, do that carving of grapes. And we chose this color because we thought it would be good with grapes. Uh, additional added value touches are uh, this spout that was added. Um, with uh, just a piece of clay that I squashed out with the heel of my hand on a on a piece of canvas and added on there to make this beaky spout. And here I kind of tapered that into the handle like I showed you on that other piece. I just kind of went like this 
and added that. And then this is another little doodad that I added. And the way I get that is I take a tiny ball of clay, roll it in the palm of my hand, make it perfectly round, put a little slip on it, set it right there. And I simply take my thumb and go like that. And that's how I get that. And then uh, on the foot, once again, it's not dead level. Um, I think I used a paddle on this one and I went around and I paddled up in some areas and in this area I actually pushed down. So, uh, trying to do some things to make them more interesting. This is a similar piece and on this one, starting at the foot, um, I made the foot stick out a little bit, which I like to do. I put uh, the digger tool under there and I kind of lift up and it makes it flare out at the very bottom. Then I used a wooden stick of some sort to make these two marks on either side. And I did that after I, uh, after it was leather hard. Uh, this does not have the spiral on the bottom that I do put on lots of things, but what it does have is these pushed out, accentuated kind of spirally throwing lines, which I got by just putting my finger inside and sliding up as it was spinning. This was ribbed smooth before I did that. On this one, you can still see my throwing lines, which probably shouldn't be there because they don't really relate to anything and they detract from the carving. So I should have ribbed them out. And on this one, once again, I have these kinds of things, but instead of going this way on this one, I went the other way. Okay, and here's my little thumb thing and my beaky spout. So that's the added value on this piece. And one of the nice things about this particular picture is the handle is close in and up high. So this has very nice balance. And when you pick it up and just hold it with one finger, it's like that. And it's easy to keep it straight upright and it's also easy to pour it. So when you make a pitcher, you want to have good balance. That's the conclusion of the session on adding value to pots. I hope to see all kinds of exciting things on the shelves upstairs before you glaze them with all kinds of added value. Okay.